over to the cloud. Hi, this is Kyle Farrar, the Western Program Coordinator for the Frack Tracker Alliance. And today it is Frack Tracker in the field. So I wanted to lead you through a bit of the work that I do on any given day here at Frack Tracker Alliance. So I am based out of California. I live in the Sierras, and the majority of the work that I do is with community groups in the uh, Essential Valley of California. That's Kern County, which is the biggest oil producing county in the country. Uh, and also in LA, along the Central Coast, there's a lot of oil and gas drilling. There are a lot of neighborhood drilling and urban drilling. And the major a lot of the work that I do looks at the proximity of homes and other types of sensitive receptors to oil and gas sites. So that's well sites, compressors, refineries. And in addition to looking at the individuals and where people live and individual sites and how close they are to oil and gas wells, we also do it on a population level. So we're looking at uh, a collection of communities and we're looking at all of the oil and gas wells. Today. So uh, one thing we can do is, is create setbacks. And am I sharing my screen right now? Right. Erica, can you see my screen right now? Yep, you are. Oh, all right. Well, there we go. Um, so what you're looking at here is all of California. And we are looking at, uh, in blue, the triangles, the operational oil and gas wells that have been drilled in California. And these are producing oil and producing natural gas. And we can overlay that data on a, a number of other different data sets. The project I'm working on right now is looking at specific vulnerable communities, vulnerable populations. And those populations are prisons in California. This work is in solidarity with some groups that are doing nationwide demonstrations in prison system. So, uh, in, in support of that work, I am mapping where the oil and gas wells are in the state, and then overlaying that data with locations of uh, prisons. And here on the left side of the screen, you can see we have the different layers of prisons. These are state prisons, uh, federal prisons, the county prisons, and then we have our oil and gas wells. And in addition to just looking at where these wells are located and how close to the prisons, we can also look at uh, the cumulative effects of collections of oil and gas wells and how they impact uh, prisons that are located, maybe not right next to them, but within the same region as them. And that means they suffer from degraded air quality and water quality. So um, here I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'll show you what we're working with here. We're working with Cal Enviro screen. It is the different colors you're seeing right now. And we're looking at pollution burden. And uh, the purple areas that we see are areas that have increased pollution burden and use uh, the highest level of pollution burden in the state. And you can see there's lots of oil and gas wells here because they contribute a lot to it. And uh, if we zoom in even further, we can see where there are individual prisons located. We can turn off the Cal Enviro screen layers if we want a better look. And here we have 2,500 foot buffers around all of our operational oil and gas wells. As you can see, this prison site is located in the middle of several large oil and gas fields. And then there's also other sites that we're interested in that we're going to map specifically, like Santa Cruz County Jail is located here, which also has a, uh, a state prison system along with it. And, you know, why are we interested in prisons? Well, uh, a full 74% of prisoners nationwide are currently held by jails, and these 74% of them have not even been convicted of a crime. Unfortunately, they are not able to meet cash the requirements, so they are stuck in these prisons where they are put, where they are exposed to 
um, a disparate amount of pollution from oil and gas, from other industrial sites. You have to remember that prisons are an industry and they are built in industrially zoned areas. So that means that prisoners are exposed to those industrial emissions and other sources of pollution. Um, something else to consider is that a large percentage, of the largest contingent of federal prisoners are in prison uh, as a result of um, drug charges. So rather than receiving treatment for addiction illnesses, individuals convicted of drug offenses are put in these prisons and uh, these individuals are often at a higher risk of health impacts, particularly considering issues of malnutrition and lack of adequate health care reasons. So uh, we are addressing this disparate impact on the ground of California with data and maps, and we are going to be releasing a report looking at uh, how prisons are located in sites that experience these disparate impacts of pollution. Um, maybe you can check back in with me later and I'll be working on something else. I can show you what else I'm doing, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this little tour through California's environmental justice analysis. Thanks so much.